The nice thing about the quadratic formula is that we can use it to solve any quadratic equation that we have. Um, other methods we use, they have to be set up a certain way um, for us to really be able to use them. So quadratic formula is nice. Any time you have a quadratic equation, this can always be a go-to. Um, you do have to remember, though, that when you're trying to solve it, it has to be in standard form. So it has to be equal to zero first before you can solve it. So the quadratic formula is right here for you guys. So anytime you're trying to solve for x, all you have to do is identify your a, b, and c, again, after your equation is equal to zero, and then plug your a, b, and c into the equation and simplify the equation then. So we're going to do two together, and then you guys can try the other ones. So if we look at number two, we want this to equal zero. So we want to subtract that 12x and add that 9 over to the other side. So what this becomes then is 25x squared, negative 18 and negative 12 becomes negative 30x plus 9 equals 0. So now we can say a is 25, b is negative 30, 30 and C is 9. So now all we do is plug it into our equation. So X equals 24 B value, so negative 30 plus or minus the square root of our b value squared minus 4 times a, which is 25, times c, which is 9. And that whole entire thing is over 2 times our a value. And then we just simplify and take it in little pieces because the, if you try to do the whole thing at once, you may mess up. So what I usually do is say, okay, well, negative negative 30 becomes positive 30 plus or minus, and then I type everything in to the calculator as you see it there. So in parentheses, negative 30 squared minus 4 times 25 times 9. And what happens is you get 900 minus 900 over 50. So you really get 0 underneath that square root. So this is one of those cases, when that value is 0, you can't have a positive and negative 0. So this is the only time where the quadratic formula will give you one solution. It's going to just be 30th, 30th, 30, 50th, or it reduces to 3 fifths. So only when it is 0 underneath that square root are you going to have one solution. So let's go down and look at number 3. So again, make sure it's equal to zero. So negative x squared, we'll just subtract that five right over. So we have our a, even though you don't see it, it's a one, so negative one. b is four, and c is negative five. And we will just plug them right into our formula. So negative our b value, plus or minus, our b value squared minus 4 times our a, which is negative 1, times our c, which is negative 5, over 2 times a, which is negative 1. So if we simplify this, we get x equals negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus 20 over negative 2. So underneath our square root will be negative 4. So we have to simplify the square root here, the radical. 
So the square root of that negative is what becomes your imaginary value. So positive or negative, i, but the square root of 4 is just 2. So what happens in this case, the root simplifies completely, and we have negative 4 plus or minus 2i over negative 2. So the only thing you guys have to check when you're done is that you can't reduce the fraction as a whole any further. So all those constants and coefficients, those real numbers, can you reduce them all by a common factor? And in this case, you can reduce everything by 2. So this would really become negative 2. And actually, because we have negative 4 over negative 2, this will become positive 2 plus or minus 1i. You can just leave it as i. You can put it over 1 if you want to. But really, 2 plus or minus i. And it's a positive 2 because it's a negative over a negative. The plus or minus is just always going to say plus or minus. So you're really looking at that 4 and the 2 in the denominator. So that's it. So sometimes your radical reduces to zero like it did in number two. In number three, the radical reduced to a whole number. Sometimes you'll have something left underneath the square root. And if that's the case, say you had something like this, you would just leave the square root of 13 go. You just simplify it as far as you can. So go ahead and try the other two.